Thank you, Villa Massimo, for having me here, inviting us all. Thank you, Heike Hanada and Adria Daraban for some good talks on our architectural interests and for letting me finally write down some reflections that I have got in my mind for longer time. <clears throat> since, we, since we woke up in a different world, as our foreign minister said, and did this the second time in a row now, I read, I read it maybe kind of different, but it's still the same. So maybe you do, the, you do it too. What more is fitting <clears throat> than in the eternal city of Rome to talk about Berlin? From the window of my studio in Berlin, one looks out onto the firewall of the neighboring Wilhelminian residential building. The following is a subjective, fragmentary glimpse at my rapidly changing city. In Rossi's Architecture of the City from 1966, there is a drawing from Hegemann's Das Steinerne Berlin, Stone Berlin, from 1930. Depicted is a city block which for me served 20 years ago as the starting point for an architectural approach, the design of fragments. In the experiment, the buildings are freely distributed in the white space. Their extraction from the fabric of the urban block transforms them into objects. It's a collage. Berliner Brandwende, Berlin Firewalls, is the title of a booklet from the series Veröffentlichung zur Architektur, Publications on Architecture, published from 1963 to 1969, long time ago, by the chair of Professor Ungers at the Technical University Berlin. Portrait are fragmentary excerpts of the urban plan with photographs of the corresponding firewalls. Ungers examines the building facades regarding their typological and morphological qualities and in the empty urban space identifies intriguing both end situations on buildings. All of the sites are shown all of the sites shown are in West Berlin. At the same time in the 60s, in East Berlin, modern socialist buildings are being erected along the newly installed boulevard of Karl Marx Allee. While the Wilhelminian buildings aligned to the historic, while the Wilhelminian buildings aligned to the historic city, layout are left standing due to the prevailing housing shortage. The result is a collage. The housing lab, still a fragment of a new idea, the corner building shortly before its demolition, still a fragment of the redesigned urban plan. The anachronismus is short-lived. Even 20 years later, comparably spatial situations can be found in East Berlin. An object of desire, as it were, for the Ungers collection, this firewall constellation is but a sideshow in an aerial photograph of Bernauer Straße in 1984, 20 years later. The complete photograph shows the Berlin Wall the city's spatial division into two parts built in 1961. The demolition of the Wilhelminian urban structure also reveals the firewalls here. At the same time, the west side of the city looks similar. 
a grey wasteland called West Berlin, eine graue Brache namens West Berlin. No one could possibly imagine that this period of time will eventually be just a moment in history. A number one 1990 edition of Architese titled New Views, so one year after the wall came down, <clears throat> Liane Lefebvre writes in her article, Dirty Realism in Architecture, about the 1980s. The intellectual, young, wild architects of dirty realism use parts from the familiar urban environment in their designs in a similar way to the writers of the eponymous literary form. Objects and contexts dictate meaning. A lack of resources and money creates desperation. Liane Lefebvre calls this design approach a contextualist confrontation, a position aimed at confronting the existing, the dirty, without any aspiration for perfection or harmonization. Hans Koloff's photograph presents a firewall in Kreuzberg like a sculpture, a monument. The view of this wall describes his 1988 architectural idea for the future of the city. In issue 177, of Quadans d'Architectura e Urbanisme, he writes, it is precisely the conflict situations that today are the norm and from which we can create an architectural spark. It is not at all inconvenient for us when urban designs have been fragmented, for they offer a treasure chest of architectural possibilities. In issue 176 of the same magazine, in an interview with Wim Wenders in 1988, he says, Koloff, the architect has two possibilities. Either to change basic urban structures which would be a very long-term venture, or to perceive differently, to discover beauty where one would have never perceived it before. He asks the filmmaker, Wim Wenders, I wonder if the recognition of firewalls as something beautiful a view that finds the lines and profiles in a city as an ensemble aesthetically pleasing. If this way of perceiving can only come from a certain distance. Then Wenders responds, I am certain that firewalls make a stronger impact on one's memory that painted, then painted over fronts. And yes, the broken buries itself deeper into memory as the whole. I see the living quality of a city directly in proportion to the, possibili to the possibility of gaps in planning. I'm still quoting Wenders. He continues, my criteria for choosing the settings has been how much longer they would be able to exist as they were, unchanged. Wenders chooses bunkers and firewalls in West Berlin as the background for his 1988 film Der Himmel über Berlin, Wings of Desire. In the gaps of the stone Berlin, a circus sets up camp, of which, according to vendors, there were many in the divided city, or kiosks. 
symbolic places of spontaneous activity on private property that belongs to no one. In his eyes, these empty places describe the city honestly. They provide a glimpse behind the facade. This block on Rosenthaler Straße is not a Wenders film set, but in 1996, 10 years later, a place of opportunity for intellectuals as, for intellectuals as well as speculators. In the interim, a circus, in the metaphorical sense, has set up camp. Cars are sold here. In fact, in the 1990s, you could buy cars everywhere in the inner city, mostly under glittering ribbons akin to a circus tent. The jagged silhouette of Berlin is the result of decades of preservation. The possibility to fill the gaps is connected with the simultaneous loss of objects, as this is how the exposed buildings with their visible firewalls present themselves within the patchy urban context. Treating these and other walls as facades, as if they were designed. That's what my book Facades is about. On each two-page spread, two facades, two walls, complement each other, resulting in typological, morphological relationships. Through their juxtaposition, a narration in the sense of dirty realism occurs. Then Wenders writes in the preface, firewalls, as you see here, are a sort of profile shot, as well an anatomical, as well as anatomical incisions through the entrails of buildings. In a frontal view, one confronts a building, eye to eye, as we humans face each other. What more could you want than to learn to see behind facades in this way? This picture, it's not from this book, it's the next. This picture of a house stands detached in the public space of the former wall along Bernauer Straße, presenting its profile and serves as a role model for the design of fragments on the side. After 20 years of looking at the void, the time has seemingly come to address the disappearance of the site. The lack of use allows the reconquest of the boundless space by nature and by an informal subversive society activity. Remember the image of the circus by Wim Wenders. The 2004 Salon Jalon seminar is the unsentimental reflection and elevation of this condition. Fragments are designed as objects waiting for completion and like a puzzle piece will dematerialize within its final contextualization. It is an examination of the city as a figure of the fragmentary Adria speaks about that, figure of the fragmentary, building without desire for completion is a contextualist controversy in the form of a collage. The post-republic 
Realized 2012 brings this idea into the world and shows the transformation of the city in high speed. Along the urban wasteland of Köpenicker Straße, a car dealership from the 1990s is converted and expanded into a post-production studio. It's the work of my office. Since the structure of the car house was built during the transitional years of the 90s without a building permit, it must first be retrospectively erected and approved by the authorities before it can be expanded. The site boundaries can only be seen in the site plan, not in the reality. As an interim use, a fragment, the building is positioned in the open space. It's a circus. The newly built, the, the new building has no facade, only walls. In anticipation of future modifications, modifications, the ideal kino benefits from the invisible architecture and anonymity in the informal space of Kreuzbergs, empty lots and ruins. At present, one can enjoy the unobstructed view of the sculpture, the small monument of dirty realism. Due to the fact <clears throat> that the roof terrace of the building on the open lot develops into a meeting place for annual May Day activities, Erste Mai, <clears throat> sometime later, a fence is erected along the property line, private property. Dirty realism in two respects. A few years later, now, the surrounding properties are built up. The small, recently com completed building becomes an anachronism between two firewalls. A new era of speculators has arrived. And of course, money has already been offered. And so, the current situation is temporary. It could be viewed as Wim Wenders has described. How much longer will this be able to exist as it is unchanged? Look at the mid-sized, dirty, and noisy, and ugly industrial building in the courtyard founded in 1960 between firewalls of the Wilhelminian buildings. Or enjoy the car tire service at the corner, established 1990, high without drugs. Or notice this emblematic development completed within decades, the fragmentary masquerade. Looking at everyday situations of the city today as if they were locations for a film, places of unknown duration, places that will soon disappear means to perceive differently, to discover beauty where one would have never perceived it before. <clears throat> the accepting sense of the present, the incomplete, without aspiration for perfection, celebrates a public space full of possibilities. This is my final picture. 
but I have one uh, as a bonus picture since, <laughs> since the publication is going to be in black and white. It's not in the publication, it's just bonus to show that the gray wasteland of West Berlin plus the 90s were very colorful due to the cars. Thank you.